about, you know, I think an uh, underlying tone is don't date broke men. Don't okay. date like yeah, yeah, yeah. these. Like it's just it's a very toxic approach. But she has, I think, grabbed a stronghold of a lot of women on social media who subscribe to her to think this way, to sh spew this rhetoric out of like what women should be looking for in mm -hmm. men. Men are expected now to, you know, from what the sprinkle sprinkle movement is it's like men are expected to pay all the bills men are okay. expected to pay for all the dates men are expected to pay for your nails hair all these things in today's economy it's a lot of money it's a lot of money yeah and so the thought is it's like why is that the norm why is that the expectation uh -huh. what does a provider mean like in my opinion a provider doesn't mean someone is going to pay financially for everything that's not a provider to me i think you know, when someone becomes the mother of your kids or someone's raising, then there's a, a partnership that, you know, is communicated and talked about and understood. And if the partnership agrees on, hey, you're going to be the stay at home parent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go out and chase this bag. That then That's is different. where financial, mm -hmm. I think, moves under that umbrella of providership or mm -hmm. being a provider. But not once do I think being a provider means when I start dating you. It, but it's like this sprinkle sprinkle is all about the dating stage, too. It's like. Go ahead, Okay. That's the full clip? Yeah. Okay. So, me, I don't think there's anything, like, I guess, wrong with a lot of these women going after, I, I'm going to call them, like, targets or suckers. I'm going to be, and you know why I kind of come from this perspective, Noble, because a lot of these dudes be so, I, I don't like saying the word simpish, but just kind of foolish with their money. And when they see a beautiful woman, they just... You know, we, we, it's our fault, bro. I'm going to just say it. <laughs> I'm going to say it. It's our fault. Um, back in the day, yeah, it was a lot easier for men to provide, like, financially for a woman. You could work a regular factory job and you would be fine. You could buy a house. You can buy a car, pay all the bills. Y'all can go out. Everything was cool. But that standard was set back then in a very different economy than we have now. Now, fast forward, uh, you know, my financial situation, I'm six figures, but at the same time, I'm in Ohio six figures. So that's great here. But me moving to Dallas, my six figures in Dallas is a very little bit different. Right. So I have to make sure that I, I do things correctly down there. And I have I also have to know I have an expectation to I don't want to say provide. But when women see you, they kind of know, like, OK, he got something going on for himself and not to play into that. But. And like I said earlier, I think you do get more respect from women when they see you can provide. A lot of men are not able to, unfortunately. And I don't, like I said, I, I don't down men for that. It's like, it's a tough economy. I get it. As long as you work, I salute you. But at the same time, when it comes to like the conversation of like being a provider, I don't think most men can, can do that. And most women that are going after those providers are not going to get them anyway. So anyways, I think... When I say, let me, let me circle back because I don't want to be all over the place. I'm just touching on a lot of stuff right now. When it comes to the expectation of today, we are the ones, and I say men are the ones that are, fault, are at fault for that. We will show a lot of these women financial attention that don't deserve it. I think I, think I might have shown you, oh no, you, you've seen like men sending like women money that are, they're just trying to get her attention, right? No, like I think I, yeah. you've seen this like, I'm a, was it forty dollars ain't enough or something? Something she like started a business out of this shit because she got so much feedback. Uh, she started like selling t-shirts. The dude was trying to talk to her, sending her, sending her money on the low. And there's a lot of this private simping from men behind the scenes. And of course, we have the OnlyFans platform that men are literally ninety nine percent funding. I'm sure somewhere around there. So we set these expectations that oh we got money and we will give it up for women. So. But at the same time, let me be fair to a lot of these women, like I said, are not going to get it. And they, they just happy to get some dick most of the time. I'm just be honest. It, social media and real life are very different. Yeah, let me let me land the plane, bro, because I could be all over the place. That's all you had to say? Overall. I mean, you just you gave me the whole platform. So I try to touch on everything, bro, but I'm like... Villain, can I ask you, when you say that they're showing these women attention that they don't deserve financially, um, you mean them warriors who who just be sliding in in the Venmo and the cash apps and they send little messages and they're Absolutely. like, please. Yeah, let me, like, let me take you I'm out. Some, 
Yes. Let me. They, some dudes will send you a cat. Like, what's your cash app? I've seen. I've seen grown men send a woman like if that's their first intro. Like, what's your cash app? That's your first line. What's your cash app? What's your Venmo? Can I take you out? Like, you don't even know if this woman's feeling you. Like, can, if, when can I take you out? Like, you, you, you desperately giving up your money. So I don't. I get. I get the expectation of women if they do try to take a guy serious that there's going to be some a financial exchange going. But there. But I don't understand why it's such a taboo topic, especially considering I think you want a family someday, right? Absolutely. And Noble, you want you would like a family as well. I think all of us work in the corporate space. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, doesn't it just make sense for you to be pocket watching the person that you're about to intertwine your finances with in general? Okay, let, um, let me let me say this, and then I want to give the floor to Blackmail because he lived a lot more life to, than us, and you know he can speak. He he has a lot of dating experience dealing with women. He had, but look again, and, I, and I've always said this, <laughs> dating back to damn 2021, we died. I've never, y'all have never heard Noble say that a woman should date a broke man, um, a woman should date a man that has bad credit, or, or that a woman should date a man that's not financially stable. Noble has never said those things, those words have never been uttered out of Noble's mouth. All Noble is saying is that nowadays in 2024, there are a lot of average and below average women that think that you know for whatever reason that's what i'm trying to figure out like where this mentality derived from and when it started happening they think that they deserve like a man that has a certain career and makes a certain amount of money i always tell you guys about the girls that are going to be stocking the shelves at walmart and target today or tonight from 11 to 7 but they want to date the partner at the law firm they want to date the partner at the accounting firm they want to date the mechanical engineer they want to date a man that's in his fifth year of being a physician like like it like in what world that's just like that just doesn't that just doesn't register to me they see the man across the city that's stocking the shelves at the other walmart and target they think that like that man is that they think that they're out of that man's league and that and and i'm gonna say this it is a problem when women start looking at men that are on the same socioeconomic level as them as not good enough. Like that 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 man should be more than good enough and more than suitable for you. And that should be a man that you're open to working, you know, towards reaching whatever level with. But to look down on those men and to not see any value in those men, that is a problem. Okay, Noble. but Noble, Noble, you know damn right, we were sitting up here, what was it? God knows when, right? We, we go all the way back. We go back to the Africa days, right? And, and, and you know damn right when that girl was trying to mind her business and work at the Home Depot, right? Who right. was it that made her uncomfortable in her job and said she was too pretty to work there, even though she didn't believe she was too pretty to work there? Men. And who harassed her out of that job that she was more than comfortable <laughs> and happy with? Men. So then what the f- do these niggas want? These niggas don't leave you alone. They're literal. They, I don't understand it. They on one hand, they're saying you're too beautiful to work a normal job. Right. And this girl's like, leave me alone. I don't want to join OF. They were pulling up to her house doing all types of crazy stuff because she was working there and she was happy with her job. Right. Because they found her too beautiful to work there. And then on the flip side, you want other women who look like her because she was a beautiful young woman, right? But there's millions of girls that look like her in the United States of America um, to look at these men as like anything other than bozos. In the words of yourself, Noble, I'm going to quote you if you're a sucker. Need to what lick was him. it? How'd you finish it off? Yeah, suckers need to get licked. I advise women, I advise women to do that. If a man is a sucker, he needs, he needs to be licked. But, and, I, and I'm going to say this and give blackmail the floor. But like you like like you said, we not. But women are women are the same people that always say, and this is one hundred percent true. It doesn't matter what I'm wearing. It doesn't matter where I'm at. Men men still hit on me, and men are always going to hit on me. Whether she's in her scrubs, shoot, a woman could be a damn concierge at an apartment building. She can be a damn security officer. She can work at McDonald's if she's fine. Men are going to hit on her. So. Like that's that's an everyday thing, sis. Like so, uh, Home Depot girl. But that's a, that's an everyday thing. Like if a woman got a pretty face, nice teeth, and a big booty, she gonna get hit on no matter what she's wearing. 
men see women at the gas station and offer to pay for their gas and pump their gas and everything. Whole time she got on like a uh she got on a crop top and like some and like some shorts. She don't got on a damn sundress and like some like some nice uh heels or something. So like men always going to hit on women. So I don't I don't think that's a fair I don't think that's a fair um correlation if you will. Yeah, I don't even know what I I'm going to let you. I'm going to just yield, bro. I'm going to yield. Okay. Yeah, you can you can speak again after blackmail speaks. Blackmail, OG, what's up with you, man? I hope you are doing well. What are your thoughts on all this, man? You've lived a lot more life than, you know, the three of us on this panel. I, I don't appreciate you. have a lot more experience dating, dealing with women. What's, what's going on, man? I, I don't appreciate you make me sound like a male thought either. He had a lot more than dating. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, I have, but hey, keep that shit on the low. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, no, I've, I've worked in all women's spaces. So my most of my most of my expertise or my, my observation with coming women come from working with them dressing them doing um doing um these a couple fashion shows i did like two three actually three fashion shows did three fashion shows so i've worked with women extensively for a, a period of time until i moved to atlanta but um which was in 2000 but um yeah i mean i agree with everything like the sister said she said something that was i agree with her right uh yeah these went this been this whole uh thing with women and men been going on it's been going on forever the problem is it's been bastardized throughout the you know throughout the generations right uh women have saw the traumas of women before them and they used it they're using it now uh as weapons against men um women have waged a full all-out assault on men when it comes to manipulating them and using this stuff in order to get in their pockets and and do all this other stuff Men don't understand they've been there. This is happening, right? They're still going on the old code, the old uh, thing we used to we used to court, right? They're still going on that whole courting thing. Courting is dead, been dead, right? This dating thing is about women getting uh, the bag, women getting with five star restaurant, Michelin restaurants, uh, trips, getting flued out and all that shit, right? This is all about them and they're, them getting exciting, uh, men exciting them and being uh, entertainment for women. And it does not equate to a, a good community, in my in my opinion, right? All this shit that's going on right now does not equate to a good, having a good community. And that's where the problem lies. The problem lies is that we as black folks, we still fucked up in this country. We act like we're not, you know? And you got people looking for their own self-grandization, right? Uh, women want to be, you know, queen, mother, earth, goddesses, whatever, and they're... they're when, let me say this first. Black women are awesome. They're awesome. They've they're strong women and all this other stuff, but they also can be uh, negative too, right? Just because they're all this great stuff, don't mean there's a negative aspect to it. And the same thing with black men. You know, black men have held down. You know, the sister said that black women have did this, that, the other, and then she came back and corrected us. I would say we work together. That is correct, right? We wouldn't have had the Rosewoods. We wouldn't have had, we wouldn't have had the, the uh, Tulsa, Oklahomas, the Oscarvilles. We wouldn't have had all those uh, thriving black communities if we didn't work together. We wouldn't have uh, had the Freedom Marches. We wouldn't have had the Black Panther Party, all that stuff if we did not work together. The problem is that when we started to, uh, when we got, you know, uh, segregation ended, now everybody's going their own way. Then we got the feminist movement happen, and now women are empowered uh, or no, they were trying to be equal, which that was good, right? Because we were along with y'all in those marches with the being equal rights for women. We was along with y'all in those marches. But the thing is, when y'all got the power, now it turned to uh, we don't need men, right? We don't need men. We don't need black men. And that's where the shit, that's where it's going to shit right now. Because eventually, this is going, times are getting harder. This is going to end. All this stuff is going to end. And Y'all gonna have to come to the realization y'all need black men and black men need to come, come to the realization that uh, looking at the black women and saying just because she's beautiful, you know, she could be a beautiful liability and that's not gonna help me out. And that's what you need to understand is men. When you get a, a, a grown man thought process and stop thinking like young men and thinking like boys and, and thinking with your, your Johnsons and shit, um, you're gonna be like, okay, yeah, you know, yeah, I like this woman. But I'm going to look deeper than that. I'm going to look past her looks, past her, that ass, past her big ass titties, whatever it is, right? I'm going to look past all that. I'm going to say, is she a liability? Is she an asset? 
And that, that will stop all this simp shit. When men understand that they have worth too, because we don't tell our young boys they have worth. We don't do it. Like, I, I was one of the ones young that didn't believe I had worth. I was I thought the women had all the worth and I didn't understand uh, my worth as a young man, as a man has always been, I'm gonna protect the women in my in my circle, right? Around me. Every, any woman around me is protected. Don't even know they got the protection. They protect it, right? Uh, the provision, uh, problem solving. Everybody, every woman I know that they'll call me, they'll just hit me up and be like, hey, what you think about this, right? That's my worth as a man. And until men as a whole see this shit, they will forever be getting that, that short chain, uh, the short end of the stick, like what she or seven is trying to do. They'll forever be doing this, but I, I yield a flow. We died. Who is it? I, okay. I'm going to be as like, okay. <laughs> I, I agree with you. I think that we should be raising little boys to have value at the end of the day um, because they do have value, but who should it be that's telling them that they have value? Um, especially when we're talking about little black boys, little brown boys, little boys of color, right? Um, when the whole world and society is telling them that they don't have value, it should be their families. I agree with you on that. Um, the disconnect here is that Shira Seven, she's just saying what's going on currently and what's been going on historically. No matter how much you tell these men anything blackmail, at the end of the day, nobody wants a woman that's hard to look at. And the women who are not hard to look at, right, um, that have, you know, all of their stuff together, that are um, the kind of women that they want to surround themselves with, they often, those women aren't with the shits. They're not with the shits. They're not dealing with the man who sits in a podcast with a little do-rag on, you know, holding an Evian bottle, talking about this nonsense. Those women don't have the energy for it, right? So then who do they, who do they resort and settle for? They settle for the women who are, um, they're beautiful, but they're, they're suckers. So they're going to be licked at the end of the day. It sucks to suck, but men don't want that. They don't want that. And that's the issue here. Uh, can you can you explain like men don't want what they don't want women they don't want women who push back at them they don't want women who disagree with them they don't want women who um are difficult for them a lot of men don't want that i'm not saying all men because there's plenty of men that are out there that are amazing that are smart talented um open-minded and are willing to be with somebody that they're not only attracted to but is maybe um capable of keeping up with them intellectually but a lot of men are going to continue to settle for beautiful women and are going to continue you know getting their pockets ran as they should as they should because why the hell would you be with an unattractive man who you have nothing in common with if not for the bag so that, so that part of the issue you just like you just degraded men down to just their wallets and you know well, not all men no, no there's no. men who are smarter and those men who are smarter true smarter don't they no what i'm saying in saying that so yeah in saying what you just said right what what good are men other than the bag right if you're gonna be with this i never guy, said that no you said if you're gonna be with the no man, i said what i said was and i'll say it again right for the men who are educated who are smart who are open-minded who are talented who are all of these things and who are open to being with a woman who is their intellectual equal right these men aren't the ones who are being um effed off they're not the men who are being scammed they're not the men who are being sheer seven right because they're choosing better however for the men who are honestly all he is is a wallet he shouldn't come to the internet and cry to us about this because some of these men the only thing they are good for honestly is money some of these women the only thing they're good for is being pretty and standing around okay yeah yeah i, I agree with that right if, if they're if they're putting their money out there as, as a is a uh as a hook basically to lure women in yeah they should get ran i agree with that part they are i, I would i want to 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 speak to that though um Again, like I said, and like I've always, like I say, and have always said, um, I highly, I always advise women um, to, um, you know, that suckers, suckers need to get licked. So if you see a man as a sucker, you know, you you need to lick him. You need to take advantage of him, um, and you know, get whatever you can get out of him, um, because at the end of the day, like the way the dating market is right now, you know, um, you know, there's women that are sleeping with men um, for nothing. Um, 
and you know when you sleep with men for nothing i'm i'm gonna say this i've always i've always said this the reason why a woman like will like meet a man today and a man won't try to take her out on a date um a man won't try to court her in any sense and he'll but he'll try to sleep with her is because there are a lot of women that are you know that are sleeping with men and not requiring them to take them on a date or put any effort into getting to know them or even put any effort in acting like they like them and want them to be something. And that goes the same way, the other way where it's like a man will meet a woman today and she'll be trying to like get some money off of him. She'll be, she'll be trying to get him to buy her something and things that nature because of these losers that we're talking about. But like, but like black men, when you talk about, um, when you talk about basically what you and we daughter are saying about men leading with their wallet, if you will, and dangling like the money, like a carrot, I understand, but it's like in these days, blackmail, like with women and we died in the eyes, age demographic, unfortunately, that stuff is kind of like bait these days. Like, you know, um, <laughs> You know, there's there's a guy, there's a guy that doesn't have any jewelry. He don't got a watch. Um, he don't drive a 2025 Mercedes Benz, but he has six figures in his bank account. He has dental insurance. He has life insurance. He has medical insurance. Like he goes to see the dentist two times a year to get a cleaning. Like he goes and gets a physical once a year. Um, he's more than financially stable. But then you got another man that, you know, he has on all designer. <laughs> he has on, he has on, he has on a cute, he has a Cuban on his neck. You know, he has a, he has a fake Rolex on. And, you know, unfortunately there are a lot of women, a lot of bird brains. I hate to say it, that they look at that man and they think that that man is more of a catch and has more going on than the, than the, uh, the first man that I discussed. So it's like, and, I, and I've always said this, and I'm going to shut up. Unfortunately, when it comes to black women, black man, for you to get a, for you to get a lot of their attention, you need to have that shit on. It's only in the black community that we say, oh, we put that shit on. Such and such put that shit on. As a man, you got to have that shit on to get like the attention of a lot of black women, most black women. You can't, you, the white men, they can pull up to the bar. I'm here in Minneapolis. I can tell you for sure. White men, shoot, even when my sister we died is in California, these men can pull up in Wrangler jeans. These men can pull up in, um, you know, dingy T-shirts, wrinkled T-shirts. You know, um, Natalie and Ashley and Stephanie and them. They're still gonna give these men, you know, the time of day. But you can't, you can't pull up to Erica. You can't pull up to Jasmine and. And them and not have that shit on and a lot of them give you the time of the day. Like your like looks and appearance very much matters in our community, fortunately or unfortunately. And I'm gonna just land my plane there. So, so. Okay, I, I disagree <laughs> I disagree with you. Um I think I think there is a specific subsect of the ghetto fabulous girlies that are probably gonna be brown watching like that. But um, but yeah, the white bitches are crazy. The white bitches are the number one pocket watchers in the United States of America, the number one gold diggers, the number one proprietors of scamming black men out of their bag is a white woman. Because let me tell you, the white women, the white women, they're out here, you know, doing what I tried to tell the girls to do. I said, why aren't y'all on LinkedIn? Because if a man tells me what he does for work, I'm gonna look at, I'm gonna look for him on LinkedIn. That's what the white girlies are doing. The white girlies are looking at his five, 10 year projections. They do not waste time with men who have no sort of potential. And a lot of black women who tend to be career driven or are educated or are in this field, in this sector, they're also looking out for similar quality, similar things, right? They're not gonna fall for just the regular brands that are on this dude. But if you want a hood ass bad bitch, right? I'm talking the kind of girl who will throw it in a rhombus, right? And she's probably a little bit illiterate, but she's a baddie. <laughs> but she's just a little bit illiterate. No, I know the woman you're talking about. 
Yeah, those are those are the women who are going to look for the brands. But I don't want you to sit here and say, oh, black women are not are, are going to be looking at what he's wearing. And no, you could just be dressed nice and respectable. That's what most people do in corporate settings. So if you're around a black woman who is around that kind of setting, then she's going to see exactly what kind of game you're putting out there. She sees that you have longevity, that you have um, stability within your career. They're not I wouldn't I wouldn't care. I wouldn't even know what kind of watch a man's wearing to begin with. Oh, go ahead, Black Mill, and then I, I want to respond to that. Go ahead, Black Mill. Go ahead. So, so the thing I agree with you, like you said, in this age, right? And this it, is that's been around. It's called peacocking. That's what we call it, right? Peacocking. It, it happens in wild in the nature and all that, right? You got to do something in order to get women attention. That's been around, right? The, the issue is right, and this is what I'm saying. This this is for men to understand that you don't need all of Black women to be looking at you, right? Because <laughs> as hard as you go to do that, somebody's looking back at, oh, I got a sucker. You know, oh, he's he tried extra hard. We know as far as when we see women doing extra, right? As a right, when we go out there to the club, we see women doing the most or dressed a certain way. Oh, she she want all the attention. That's an easy mark for most men because they know they just got to put money out. Oh, and they could get her. So right. it's the same thing. I mean, it's it's equal the same way, only different. But we we have to understand as men, right? We don't need all women attention. We don't need that shit. You know, we find out what's what's your main objective, right? At this age, okay, I'm gonna say when I was 20. It's my 20. My main objective was my main objective was to smash at 20, right? Right. So I did that. I played that game at 20, right? I, I was in the clubs three, four, five nights a week doing that. What you just said, right? Right. So you get up to your 30s, whatever plus. Now your main objective isn't to smash like that. Your main objective is to find somebody of substance that right. you know that'll add to your life, and you need to change your game plan. I think a lot of men don't change up. You know, as they get older, they, they really don't change up until they get to the point where they say, uh, I've been through a lot of these situations, these women that I've been smashing only doing a certain thing. And that's because we, you know, we play in a game instead of running our own, you know, our own lane and run our own game. Go ahead, super villain. I just wanted to go back to what you said earlier, bro. <laughs> when you said like women, you expect women to be approached. I mean, yes, yeah, it's, it's one thing to approach a woman. Hey, my name is this. You know, I'd like to, you know, get to know you. Can we exchange numbers? What's your IG? Maybe phone numbers, whatever. You, I think you're. I don't want to say you're being disingenuous, but when we talking about men approaching, their approach is, I got that money, and women are kind of being. I want to say in a sense being conditioned. I want to say program. I want to say conditioned to expect. Okay, if you're a man, it's gonna be in my face. If I get so many approaches, I get so many DMs. And I, I think you told me you've seen a girl's phone, like her DMs, right? Like, have you right. seen, like, it's insane. It's ridiculous. <laughs> like, so it's like, you have so many suitors, wannabe suitors that are in your inbox all day, every day, trying to talk to you about any, just at a certain point, your mind is going to turn on, like, just as functionally, I can't, I can't sort through every individual. I can't, I don't want to give every individual my time and a date. Okay, who can provide me the best? And granted, we call these women delusional all the time, but again, look into their DMs and y'all can say, oh, they don't want marriage or he just wants sex. They, all they see is hell of attention, hell of suitors. And then you naturally hypergamy is going to kick in. Okay. I got so many contenders who can do the most for me, who got the most money, who looks the best, who got the most clout, who got this, that, then third, who got a house, who got the nicest car, blah, blah, blah. So I can't. That's why I say it's our fault, bro. I can't fault women for those expectations. And I think Bubbles made a good uh, comment as far as as far as this clip in particular. With Shira, it is just about getting a sucker. It's not really so much finding a good man or a good husband, which I think black males advocating for, which is a good thing. It's a great thing, a necessary thing for families and community. However, if women are going after suckers and they want to listen to Shira said, man, have fun. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, Shira Seven's in like a toxic relationship. I mean, I've, I'm not I don't follow her life, but I, I think I've seen like lives of her man like kicking in the door or some shit. And they was he told her to get out the house or something like he's filing divorce papers or something. But it, it, it didn't look too happy. It didn't look too, look too uh, comfortable. So people going to get what they get. You no, know, you always say people always get what they deserve. bro. Like and I, yeah. that's one of my favorite quotes from you. Like you people can always get what they deserve. If you chasing that bag instead of a good man, you are gonna get what you deserve, and it's not gonna be good. So I, I'm I'm not too worried about it, bro. Like, and, and let me—that's the last thing I'll say too. 
when we talk about these women who are not even interested in men unless they got that money, nine times out of ten, the dude's not attractive. Are they not? They're they're not attracted to the dude. If they were attracted to that dude, they don't. I'm not saying money doesn't play a factor, but it's not going to be the first thing that comes to their mind when they look at you. So, I would say probably work on your presentation, work on your physique, work on your style, drip, whatever, to just to make you attractive. I, I, that's that's the best advice I, I can think of. If you don't want to go after you know the money as a man, cool, that's fine. Just make sure you you got your looks or you got at least some a way to carry yourself so women don't really factor that in off rip to why they should even talk to you because a lot of these men are not even presentable like i i swear this is the last thing i was i was on my facetime with my girl and she was in like walmart and dudes like i'm like why are you even approaching her looking like that like i'm not i, I it's where i get to see like what men approaching women like in the field it's like my girl got approached like two, three times, and I'm on Facetime with her at Walmart. I'm like, why are you even older dudes? Just not even, just not even looking good, and I'm like, this, it, it just like it's embarrassing. Like, why would you even present yourself and try to talk to her? Just it's creepy, bro. Just dudes be creepy. Dudes have no game. It's it's embarrassing. So I can't fault women for be like, where's where's the paper at, bro? So I, like I said, I, that's all I got, man. No, I, I again, I, and I've told you this before. I don't have any issue with women being hypergamous. Like I, like I've said earlier, like I've always said, I do think it's problematic and I'm going to stand on this. It is problematic when women start looking at men that are on the same socioeconomic level as them as less than or not suitable for them. And then again, I want to speak on what blackmail referred to as the peacocking thing. And I wish, you know, we died was still here. She says she's coming back. But um, yeah, are there are there some let me not even say some. Let me be let me be nice and say, are there a lot of black women that have like careers, whether they work in corporate, um, whether they're running their own businesses, but they're being they're successful at whatever it is that they do um, and they're getting they're getting money and they're not necessarily um impressed and sold by what a man is wearing and how he's presenting himself and they more so care about what he really has going on outside of the you know external sure but i'm just saying like you know i i believe blackmailed is like in his early 50s you're in your mid 30s we died and i are in our mid 20s like a lot of a lot of people in their mid 20s they're um they've probably if they've been in the same career field they've probably been in it for a few years now they're really just kind of starting to come into some money um and they're buying nice things and all i'm saying is like again women in you and blackmail's age demographic they don't care about all that stuff anymore they've been there done that blackmail been there done that before but i'm saying that women in a early and mid 20s even if they do have a career and they got a retirement plan and all these other important things you know like you can't just be the guy that you can't just like you just basically what you just said what i was saying earlier your appearance does matter not just your physique but like you you do got to have that shit on for a lot of these women to give you the time of day <laughs> i'm sorry it's a reason it's it is i and you know i'm gonna let black male speak to this but like that's like I said, as in our culture, it's always been put that shit on black people. We like to dress. We like to put that shit on. We like to have on nice things, especially us as men. Like we know that we're going to look super good in it, but we know we're going to attract women when we got that shit on, too. Like we can't. Like, I think it's disingenuous to think that, like, I don't I don't I don't know. That's just the way it is. And I think that's I think that's how it's always been. Black people always been putting that shit on. Whether he, whether a man got on a suit, whether a man got on some damn chino pants and a button down, like we always like, especially when we're going to events or we're going places where we know that we know there's going to be a lot of women, we got to have that shit on. You can't just walk up to like any just you can't just walk up to a lot of black girls and not be like put together super well and they give you the time of day. No, they care about your appearance. What, what you got to say to that, Black Milk? Yeah, like I said, I agree with you saying, and it it does it does play a big factor because we are uh, in the black community. We are definitely geared to 
uh, talk about somebody they look like they, they ain't <laughs> part, right? We geared towards that. But what I'm saying, we need to rethink that. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying you're wrong when I say we need to rethink that. Is a, is a better way to go about this, right? Because because all these corporations know we like this because they've been studying this, right? Go back, there was a film, uh, How to Sell to a Negro, right? That, that was in 1950s, I think. Wow. How to Sell to a Negro. And they've said it. They already know what we do. And they use that against us, and it's to our detriment. So uh, what I'm saying is that in my age range, right, there's still women that like, like label whores in my age range that look at men and be like, oh, look what you got. And... What I do, you know, I, I'd rather have I'd rather have the retirement, like you said, I'd rather have retirement, right. I'd rather have money in the bank. I right. feel better when I have a money in the bank versus when I have some Louis on or some shit. Right. Like that. That's just me, right? Because I could go out and I could do whatever the fuck I want to do because exactly. I'm in the bank. But if she don't understand that, she's just not for me. And men need to be okay with her not being for him, right? That's what I think we kind of, as men, we get emotional when we think a woman is looking down on us because we don't have that shit on, right? You right. have to be okay with that. You just have to be okay with that because it's not for you. You're going to spend money chasing somebody that you could get that good feeling anywhere. Anyone, right. right? You have to defund and devalue the punani and whatever else, right? You got to de devalue that shit because at the end of the day, if she's a liability to you, that's worth, that's negative, that's net negative out of you versus somebody that be cool, just cool to be with. You like to be around her. You won't get the same thing. She going she might have a guap, you know, guap, whatever three thousand, you know, she might have that. She going to wop, she have all that, right? But mm. you don't have to be seen. That's an ego thing. We need to get our egos, black men. I think we have a little bit too much ego. Once we get rid of that ego, we can have prominent black men that can come together and do shit that'll help our community. And I, that's what I'm all about. I, I don't care about personal choices. If that shit is hurting our community, we need to step away from that shit and do some other shit. That's that's why I always talk about from that aspect. No, I think I think you said it best, Black Mill. I think you said it best earlier. Like, I honestly think you said it best earlier when you said us as Black men need to understand and start accepting that we don't need the attention of all Black women. <laughs> like, I, th I think, like, there's no better way to say it. Like you said, we don't need the attention of all Black women. <laughs> I, I, it, it, ain't, it ain't nothing else to say. Could you expand, uh, expound on what you mean by our ego, black man? When you said uh, we need to, I guess, let our ego go. So if you think about it, right? Like I said, when we get to my age, I've 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 had a, a quite a few baddies, right? I'm not gonna say tens. I say eight nines. I say eight nines, right? I've had quite a few. They always cost, right? They always cost, and oh, what I get from it? Yeah, yeah I go out and get seen, but. It's coming from my bank account. It's coming from something I could be doing that's gonna that's gonna help me out in the long run. Right. So that was an ego driven thing to do to go after this one. When I had some that was maybe four or five, just to put a number, or not not to be you know disparaging or whatever or degrade any any woman. I'm just saying you know because we men up here we know what we talking about when we say that. Right. You know? So you know the fours or fives or the sixes whatever. They was just as good when it came down to doing what you know what we did have fun you know i didn't have no less fun with her you know not not just in the bedroom i'm saying out the bedroom you know going out taking her out the conversation probably was better with the f five or sixes right the conversation probably was better because if you know about it privilege, privilege privilege right a lot of these beautiful women they don't have a personality when you come down to it yeah. right we all seen that because men been dropping at her feet she expects certain things, and if she's not getting it, she's gonna give you that old dry, stale as uh, answer, replies, and shit. Yep. And you like, okay, why am I here with her? I've been in those situations. That's when I had to grow up, be like, you know what? This not even worth my time. Just so people could say, oh, look, she he got a bad one on his arm. And I'm like, okay, that's not worth anything. At the end of the day, you know, I've had multiple different races. I've had foreign. I had one straight from China. I had a, a Native American that was bad. But at the end of the day, it was like, all right. What is it? What? Why am I? You know, I had to sit down myself, look in the mirror. Why? Why am I even doing this? And when it came down to it, it was like, okay, just so people could admire me for being a man, and that one hundred, they didn't put money in my pockets. One hundred. No, really quick, super villain. No, black male, like bro, you, 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 you said it. You said it best. And like you know, um, those women, if we want to call, it, refer to them as nines or tens or whatever. As you said, they don't have the personality because their looks become their personality. Their looks become their personality to the point so much that they don't even 
feel the need or even think about developing people's skills and social skills and being able to converse with a man because at the end of the day, like you said, blackmail, they're they're licking a lot of suckers. There's a lot of suckers that are vying for their attention and they're taking advantage of these men. So, and I've always said this, I've always told these people this. For a lot of those women, if you don't come to them on some sucker time, they're gonna look at you sideways and like treat you like like you said, they're gonna treat you a certain type of way. So it's like, you know, it's it's a toss-up with a lot of those girls. But super villain, go ahead and go ahead and say what you want to say. Then I'll let undisclosed speak. No, I just I just wanted to make sure I got I was trying to make sure I got the point. So you're saying like the ego part was you letting like the eights and nines go to go for the, the fives and sixes? No, he's saying that the reason that he was going for those type of women, like think about it. Think about it. I'm you go out it. and you're seen with a woman that's a nine or a ten mm. versus going out and being seen with a woman that's like a six or a seven. You obviously the nine or ten is going to is going to cost more, but you're but the attention that you're going to get from it, the eyes, what people are going to say, you're you're really only doing that because of ego at the end of the day. It's not because it's not because like her conversation is better, it's not because she's a better person, it's not because she brings more value to your life, it's simply because of how she looks. Bingo. Got you. Okay. I just I thought the only reason I'm I was I'm perplexed because I was like, obviously you would be more attracted to the nines and tens, but then you're saying like just to do away with them. So I'm like, it makes sense for you to go out because with a nine to content, because you find her that attractive or spend money on her, whatever the situation was. So I I get what you're saying now. So so okay, we men up here, right? So you gonna tell me your 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 eggplant not gonna get hard for a six or seven? You're not yeah. gonna smash six or seven because she just. Less, she's less attractive than nine or ten. No, I've never said that. I'm no, just, no, I'm just no. I'm not saying you said that. I'm just saying I, that was a question. I, it was just me. I'd be like, no man is gonna say, okay, oh, she's right. a six or seven. Oh, she disgusts me. I'm not gonna smash, right? Right. Nobody gonna say that. So that's what I'm saying. At the end of the day, it's an ego-driven decision because, like I said, when it comes down to conversation, you know, we might. If a conversation is your thing, getting you know involved and understanding a woman and getting to know a woman. You're going to have a better chance of getting that out of a, just an average woman versus a woman that's a supermodel. Yeah, 100%. I agree with that. Undisclosed. What's good, OG? Man, long time, long time, long time. I know, man. I, hey, man. I, I ain't been on here since October of last year, man. I'm on I YouTube. I was trying to figure out. Yeah, I was like, what happened to know? I can't <laughs> I'll, pop up, I'll pop up today, though, man. I, I, ain't, I, I took the day off, so I'll pop up today real quick. Man, it's good, it's good seeing you, brother. Yeah. But yeah, y'all y'all right. Y'all right. Y'all got a bunch of good points. Um, a lot of times, you know, men want to be seen with the, the arm candy. You know what I'm saying? Like, at, at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? We... We want to be seen with it. Like, regardless of the fact, she might be an airhead. She might not even be the thing. She might be a liability. She might cost us, like, buku's of money. We just want to be seen with that. But now, I'm not saying all men, but I'm just saying in general. Most, speaking. Mo that's most men, though, undisclosed. Yeah. Yeah. Like, mo most men do want to be seen with that woman. That arm candy. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So I'm speaking in general. So I, I don't want, you know, some of the fives or sixes to get misconstrued or get, a, you know, get get confused about what I'm saying. Now, there are some men that will, you know, take the fives or six, you know, what I'm saying because they have matured and they said, you know, I don't got time for the headache. <clears throat> so there there's some men out here that that's like that gets down to that level that they're. they're back to you know reality saying okay well if i got this five or six she might give me better conversations she might even be able to help me save money whatever the case is you know what i'm saying because eye candy sometimes can be kind of materialistic and that that right there hurts the pockets and here's one thing that i notice um a lot if sometimes when they're the nines or tens sometimes their growth is kind of stunted because of us you know, we sit here and we feed them. We feed them with uh, validation. We tell them that they're beautiful. They don't have to do anything. So they might not even have a personality or, or anything to offer us except for that good look. So there's their actual self is stunted. They don't know how to uh, show, you know, character or that they could do something else other than just being pretty. You know, it's because of us. We've kind of stunted their growth. So they don't know. So that's, a, that's an issue that we have also with, you know, the the beautiful, you know, nines and tens. 
And it, I kind of, I kind of put a little bit of that on, on the onus on us because you know we do feed into their, um, to their ego, you know, so to speak. So hopefully, what I'm saying is making sense. But I'm gonna land with that. I got more to say, but I'm gonna land with that. No, no, no. I, 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 I 100 um, understand what you're saying. And um, really quick, blackmail. What, what do you, what do you think about that? Because I, I 100 agree with him that. You know, like we we talk about these women not having the personality and not being able to converse in this, that, and the third, but men are the ones who are, you know, making them be that way. I agree with him. I, I'm going to add to that because I agree with that uh, partially because the okay. thing is like beautiful women, it's before they even started dealing with men, right? Their mothers told them this. His mothers told them, okay, you can use your beauty. I've heard women tell their daughters, oh, you got an ATM between your legs, you know, and you, you're beautiful. You, you know, you should never be broke. You should never be hungry or broke. So, you know, yeah, we added to that. I don't think we started it. It starts from the home, and then we added to it. We, we solidified that thought process by falling over and doing that. But, yeah, that's the part I, I just had to change. What you yeah, got to yeah, say I, to that, Undisclosed? Yeah, I, I don't think we started it. I mean, yeah, yeah true, true indeed. We, I don't think we started it, but the thing is we – actually um added on to it we we actually kind of um enabled it you know we we kind of created some of that monster you know they already have this little facade about themselves oh i'm a 10 i can go out here and get any any dude that i want to i can make him spend money on me i could get his back you know what i'm saying like at the end of the day they already have that mentality but we only like what's the word magnify the thing for them you know so I, I sit here and I'll speak the truth to him. I, you know, she could be as, as bad as she want to be. But, you know, if the attitude is nasty, uh, uh-uh, you finna know about it. And I, and I tell men also uh, this because y'all, y'all spoke on this topic, um, you know, like spending. What I don't do is try to impress a woman, you know, because these women nowadays are like he's got to spend three hundred dollars on a date. My first date. Like, hell no, I'm not doing that. What I'm going to do is invest that money in either real estate or or. or generation, you know, generational wealth. I'm going to make something happen for my kid. So um, I'm not going to invest that inside of you because that's, that's ridiculous. Just so you can say, oh, well, he spends money on me, so I'm, I'm going to keep that. No, that's reckless. You know, that and that's what's going on now. And I'll tell uh, guys nowadays, I say, hey, listen, don't be spending that much money. You spend money, spend about $50 because you're going to shit it and piss it out. So just just spend your regular amount. <laughs> Nine times I, out of ten, uh, she might finesse. She might finesse you out of a, a, a meal. So nine times out of ten, so don't do it, fellas. Me, you I got, got the same thought process, bro. I say the same thing. It's like burning money. You gonna shit and piss that shit away. So why are you doing it? I, I, I'm, I'm going to respectfully provide some pushback against um, both of you on that. Um, nah, look, look, man. I think, I think. <sighs> no, nah, I'm going. I'm, I'm going. I, 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 this is the stance that I have on that. Listen, um, it's so funny that we're having this conversation. Um, I seen, I seen, I seen someone, I seen a man say this the other day. He said something to the tone of, to the tune of, some women get floor seats. Um, some women get like taken out to dinner at like a nice restaurant, and some women get like called up during like booty call hours. But um, I know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with like trying to be. Um, cheap, because that's how I look at it. Y'all can disagree. Y'all can speak on it after I'm done. But I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. I'm not with the whole trying to be cheap um, when you're when you're dating, and especially when you're dating women that look a certain way. Um, who is this? I don't know who this is. Um, love for humanity. Are you a man or are you a man or a woman? I can't tell by your profile picture. I can't tell what y'all going on. Anyways, uh, fellas, um, and Kevin Samuels had even made a video about this. Like, this is this is what I think. I think this is part of like I think men trying to get, you know, uh, the most for nothing. Um, you know, like if you if you if you wanna if you're dealing with a woman that look a certain way, like I think us men need to understand that yes, it's going it's going to cost you. Like, you know, if you dealing with a woman that look like she should be courtside at the basketball game, you can't try to you can't try to take her like on like a fifty dollar date or take her to go get coffee. And a lot of a lot of the times that does that does not work because because of the way she looks. Men, 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 most men that are that are coming her way 
Most men that are taking her out are not taking her to Starbucks to go sit down and have coffee. They spend in that bag. So if you want to, if you want to like, you know, play that game with her, you're going to have to spend that bag as well. It just comes with it. As a man, if you don't want to spend that bag, then you need to get with a woman that don't look like that. Because the woman that don't look like that, they're not, they don't have men, you know, taking them to go sit courtside at the game. They don't have men going to, you know, take them to the, like you in Atlanta blackmail. These women, these women got men taking them to go sit in the box at the Falcons game. You know, if you don't, if you don't have, there's women that they don't get those opportunities. So they're going to be cool going bowling. They're going to be cool um, going to the cheesecake factory. Like we saw, I don't know if that was earlier last this year or late last year, the girl had a problem going to the cheesecake factory, but no, like men, men, if you want to deal with a woman that's, that looked a certain way, you need to take on everything that comes with dealing with a woman that looks that certain way. We know that the, the better she looks, the more maintenance it's going to be, and it's going to be a higher cost. And you got, as a man, you got to decide whether you want to eat that or not. But if you don't want to eat that, then leave that girl alone. What you got to say, Black Milk? So uh, and I'm going to disagree with that, too. I've, I've okay. had a couple of baddies. I, I'm going to tell you, right, the women are, that are used to that, they're looking for something different. They're bored with that type of shit. I've had a woman that drove straight. That was her only car was a Rolls Royce, right? She was from Brazil. She was a bad, she was bad as hell, right? When I, when I went out with her, black woman was looking at me like, oh, what the fuck? What do you do? You, you a rapper? What the fuck are you? You know, that's how they looked at me. And I'm like, because I didn't bow to a bullshit. I'm not trying to press you. This is me. You've seen who I am, right? So the dates I took on was moderate dates. It wasn't no expensive dates. And mind you, this was this is pre, you know, the big whole social media thing. I think this right. was 2000. I think it was like 2008, I think it was, 2009. So, you know, everything has began, began, became sensationalized or whatever. But, you know, this is what women that they, when they got this lifestyle they're used to that so it's like damn i want somebody to connect with me right. so the dude is gonna get up there and they're gonna talk that talk and it's gonna tell her stuff that most men won't tell her like some normal average shit. hey this is what i do this you know and be himself and be real he's gonna get her attention more so now he she might choose one of the other guys that you're talking about but this other dude is gonna smash trust me he's gonna smash also because he's different right if every dude is doing the same thing how does she pick which one she's gonna be with Everybody doing the same thing. So <laughs> you have to, you have to, right? You can't just say she bad and she deserved this, that, the other. That's why oh, women no. are, you know, that's how they, why they, who they are right, right now, right? Mm -hmm. They, they just don't respect a man's money, a man's time, or nothing because men are just throwing that shit away. So, oh, oh, really quick, uh, really quick before you say, say something that, undisclosed, you know, really quick before I, you say something. I, I, I could agree, but I could say that's. There, there, are, there are a group of women, right? Older women, like uh -huh. in their forties, right? That mm -hmm. that shit don't work with. What you talking about? It just right. don't work. They looking for substance, right? Okay, but this, this, this is what, I'm, what this is what I want to say real quick before you speak undisclosed. I've always said this too. A lot of men be trying to deal with women that don't like them. As a man, if and when you are trying to deal with a woman that doesn't like you. If she sees you as a sucker and she wants to lick you, then as a man, you're going to end up doing those things. But if if men, if 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 majority of men start dealing with men or excuse me, with women that actually like them, they won't have to do those things because there are. Trust me, I'm, I'm speaking from experience. I'm a young man. There are there are women that are, quote unquote, baddies that if they like you, you're not going to have you're not going to have to do the most. And I always tell men, if you feel like you like you said, blackmail, if you feel like you're like trying to impress a woman, you've already lost. If you if if you can't, if she doesn't accept you and respect you and like you as you being your like natural self, if she doesn't just enjoy talking to you, if she just doesn't enjoy being in the presence of you without you spending money, you've already lost. But men need to start dealing with women that like them. And like I always say, everyone is getting what they deserve. So as a woman or as a man, if you are not satisfied with, you know, your current options in the dating market, you need to go do the self-improvement so you can, you know, um, possibly change your circumstances and attract better men or women that are more to your liking. But as like you said, black male, as long as these men continue to deal with women that don't like them, these women are going to take advantage of them. And I don't, and I don't see nothing wrong with that at the end of the day. But go ahead, Undisclosed.
Perfectly perfect. Yeah, at the end of the day, my main objective is just to get to know that person. And I want that person to do the same for me. Um, <clears throat> just because I can spend, uh, you know, a, a stack on you don't mean that, you know, situation is going to be because sometimes they say, you know, men to lead with the money. If they get used at, at the end of the day, you know, oh, well, that's on him because he led with his money first. Right. So my thing is, look, I'm going to spend money on her. Like I said, I'll take her to some fucking old trolleys or some uh, Alexander's or something like that. But I'm not finna go take her to no uh, ex super Steakhouse. expensive restaurant. Steakhouse. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's not gonna happen. You know, not on the first, not on the first day. I need to see that we got some interest together. I need to see that me and you got something in common. I need to see that, you know, hey, this might go a little further than, you know, a couple of months. Right. You know, then I will spend on you. But in the beginning, no, it's just ridiculous. It's asinine. And plus, I got a kid. You know what I'm saying? I got a kid in the equation. So that makes it a little different. Now, when I didn't have a kid, I kind of thought like you did. But now that I have a kid, it's like, do I want to put this money? Do I want to invest it in this expensive restaurant? Or do I want to put it towards my kid's future? Or do I want to buy a second or third house? You know, it's, oh. it's now now things look a little different to me and for me than right. to spend and to impress somebody that we might just last for, you know, it might fizzle out within a year. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, I, I want to be, hopefully I'm making sense with this because, you know, Honestly, what you saying? yeah, financially, financially literate. I want to make sure that I'm doing things the correct way and not just spend money just to be spending money and to just to look good. It's, it's just weird to me. And I'll end with that. Super villain, what you got to say? Oh, brother, I'm just enjoying the conversation, man. <laughs> I mean, we said, oh, Charlie's, bro. I, I ain't heard of Charlie's in a while, bro. I, that's over. <laughs>